We usually think of C programs as simply text, but in order to compile and optimize the program, we need more powerful representations and data structures. Compilers use several different types of representations for different aspects of the code, including both control and data. Source code simply isn't a very good representation for a program. It's clumsy, it's verbose, there's a lot of unimportant information in it, but it also leaves a lot of very important information about the program implicit. We have to extract important information by analyzing the source code. Compilers use a series of intermediate representations when they manipulate and optimize programs. We can make use of some of these representations in order to help us understand programs themselves and also the transformations that we use to go from high-level languages. We'll look at representations for both data flow and control flow. The data flow graph is a basic representation. It's often called a DFG. It only represents data flow, not control. It models a basic block of code, that is, a code that's entered at the top and exits at the bottom. The purpose of the data flow graph is to describe the minimal relationships in order between the operations in that basic block. Here's a basic block. This is familiar. We know we start execution at the top and we work our way down through the statements. This basic block has two assignments to the Y variable in the second and fourth lines of code. We use the assignment from the second line in order to compute the third line. The value we compute on the second line of code, C minus D, is used to help us compute Z. After that, we perform the second assignment to Y. We don't want to confuse these two different values, so we're going to transform this basic block into what's known as single assignment form. You can see here that the second assignment to Y has been given a different name that allows us to distinguish the different values. Of course, later on in the program, we would have to annotate uses of that second assignment to this new name. We still have our two assignments here, but now we can clearly distinguish them. Here's our data flow graph taken from the single assignment form. Each operator in the code is represented by a node in the graph. A variable, whether it be on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, is represented by an edge in the graph. All the edges are directed to show where data comes from and where it goes to. So we have A plus B, which produces the X value. C minus D produces the Y value. Z is produced by X and the multiplication with Y. Y1, the second assignment to Y, is produced by the sum of B and D. So we can see much more clearly here that we have some freedom in the order in which we perform these operations. We clearly can't perform the multiplication or the addition that's used for Y1 until we finish the first two operators first. But we can do those two operators in whatever order we want. We can do the bottom two orders. We can do the bottom two operations in different orders. So, for example, we could perform A plus B and C minus D if we have a machine that can do two arithmetic operations at one. Then because we have the values we need, we can compute B plus D and X times Y. We also need to represent control. A control data flow graph, or CDFG, represents control. It also has units that allow us to encapsulate the data. We're going to use data flow graphs as components in our control data flow graph. So we have two types of nodes in a CDFG. The decision nodes for control and the data flow nodes for data operations. We're going to represent a data flow node as a box. If we're writing a program to manipulate this, we would use a data flow graph to represent it. But it's often simpler to just write the basic block that this block represents. Control can be represented in a couple of different ways depending on how many branches we have in the control. So a two-way or three-way, we would, so a two-way or three-way condition, we would typically draw as a four-sided diamond. In the middle of the diamond is the condition that we need to evaluate to decide which direction to go. If we have more choices, such as a switch, we might draw this more complex diamond with more sides. That allows us to draw more arrows out of it.
we still have a value or a condition that we use in order to determine which branch to take. Here's a control data flow graph for a simple block of code. So we have a condition here. If the condition is true, we take BB1, otherwise we take BB2. We always execute BB3, and then we go to the switch statement, evaluate test 1, and we will take one of those cases. A for loop in C is defined to be equivalent to a while loop. The loop initialization basically becomes a block before the while loop itself. So we can represent a for loop in C using this control data flow graph structure. To summarize, data flow graphs capture the necessary relationships between variables and operations in code that does not have control operations. We can also model control operations separately and we use control data flow graphs to generate more complete models of programs that capture both the data aspect and the control aspect. To summarize, data flow graphs capture the necessary relationships between variables and operations in code that does not have control operations. We can also model control operations separately, and we use control data flow graphs to generate more complete models of programs that capture both the data aspect and the control aspect.